y'all. So we made this super easy DIY bathtub tray to fit our freestanding tub in our primary bathroom. It was super easy to make. It was very few products involved and it was very affordable. It was under $40. This can be put together in one day. So we made, measured this to fit our standing tub, which is 34, and then the tray width itself is 11 and 3 quarters. And um, we used one cedar board, that was it. And then two handles, stain and poly. Um, so the cedar board itself is just like naturally water resistant, but to really add on top of protecting the integrity of our tray with constant water use, we also polyed it as well. But this video tutorial is gonna show you how to knock this thing out in one day for under $40. This is our board, it's eight foot long. I'm gonna cut it down into more manageable pieces. Our tray is 34 inches in total length. So uh, I'm gonna cut this down. We cut an eight by eight by one cedar board down to three pieces. The first two pieces are 32 and a half inches long and will serve as the base of the bathtub tray. The third piece we'll utilize to cut the trim to trim the tray. <laughs> We set our fence to cut the main boards down to five and an eighth inch wide. We then set our fence to cut the trim at one and an eighth inch wide. We use the third piece of wood to cut trim to go all the way around the tray. Before we mitered the edge of the trim, we placed it along the tray to make sure the cut was long enough. For the corners of the tray, we mitered each trim piece to a 45 degree angle cut. What we did is we would cut one end and line it up against the board to make a mark to let us know where the other end of the trim needed to be minor cut. You should always pre-drill whenever you're screwing into wood, but definitely you need to do that on cedar. So you we'll don't split, what? Split it. So you don't split it, folks. Coming in three inches. You were gonna say, coming in hot. Coming in hot. Three. You could say that. The last tray, we nailed them in, but we didn't have any of the appropriate size nails. So we're improvising and we're doing screws. We use two strips of wood on the back of your tray, which keeps both of your boards attached to one another and it prevents your tray from slipping off the edge of your cup. Okay. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead. Give me a say in this. Start by sanding your tray with 80 grit, and then move up to a 120 grit, and then finish with a 220 grit. This will give it a really smooth finish. Truth, can't go back now. 
We use Ipswich Pine as our stain color. We did one coat on the front and the back. For each trim piece, we spray painted them black. Make sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. Chris has this technique of just swinging them around in the air until they dry. After that, we spray painted the tips where we were holding them. So I am using just a throwaway brush, load it up, and then just slap on some poly. That's what I'm gonna do. I have a separate video that talks about tips and suggestions that I utilize when I stain board. I've linked that in the description below. So if you want more information on how to stain a board with my suggestions, be sure to watch that YouTube video as well. So we're attaching the borders now to the tray itself. We've got these here on the bottom that hold the boards together as well as keep the tray where it wants to be in the bathtub or where you want it to stay in the bathtub. But since it's sitting flat, I've got the same scrap piece, you know, the same width as those pieces that we attached. So it put that there, which raises your trim to the exact height you need it to be. I'm gonna use clamps as well to clamp it together. Keeps it nice. Farted in the middle of that. I know. It's staying in there. <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> it stinks too. Okay. So I should be able to lift this up and you should be able to tell it's pretty even down there. When I say that, it is not even at all. Let's fix it. Not even at all. That's better. Since we have it like that, tack it in. This way. It's hard to explain, but they'll go this way into the wood. So width just of the wood. hold that up to the wood real quick right. and let's catch that angle. So like this. This so, is what you want to do. You'll shoot it like this straight in. Mm -hmm. And wow. that do it up because of that, but it will shoot in like this instead of blowing out this way, ruining your top of your bottom of your wood. So just like straight 90 degree, yep. not at any kind of an angle. Well, let me explain it a little bit better. You want to shoot it like this, not like this. Oh. A lot of people, it seems like this should be the right way to go. Oh, I see. Because if you shoot it like this, for example, maybe I can do it on this piece of scrap. Like if you shoot it like this. Mm -hmm. There, there. See? Oh it blew goodness. out. It blew out in the wrong way. But since it blew out that way, because as I said, these are V'd like this and it blows out. But if you were to shoot it like this, let me eat my words here. No blowout. Whoa, it's like magic. Continue to nail in the frame on each edge of the trim until it's securely attached. Our poly was still drying, so we used the compressor to blow off dust. Man, catch those handles, y'all. Ooh, that's a good handle. Drill handle guide. Uh, these can be picked up anywhere almost any hardware store they're like two bucks so they allow you to put it on your piece wherever you want it and then you can drill mark your holes exactly where it needs to be 
96 millimeter. 96 millimeters right there. It's got center line holes. I'm just lining that up with this center line yeah. here. So line up the center hole here. 96 millimeters yes. here. Yes. We'll mark them. To complete the tray, we attach the handles on either side, blew off any remaining dust, and wiped down any imperfections that we saw. And this is the final product. Super easy, right? Be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at the.reno.gal for more DIY projects.